If you're going through the menopause and want to do some gentle exercises to combat your symptoms, then I've got a workout for you. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I have a gentle workout for women that are experiencing symptoms of the menopause. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. So last week I did a video on exercise tips and advice on this topic. And if you haven't seen that yet, then it's probably worth a watch to help you with day-to-day -day activities. And I'll leave a link in the description below so you can watch it later. This is going to be a gentle workout though that will have three elements to it. We will start with some cardio and mobility exercises for our warm up, then go into strength and conditioning exercises for the main part, and finish with stretching and relaxation for the cool down. Ideally, you will need a therapy band or resistance band for the strength and conditioning component. However, if you don't have one of these, I will offer alternatives for the exercises that you can do with your body weight or a pair of hand weights. I will also leave a link in the description below if you want to purchase your own set of therapy bands to help you perform the exercises in this video. Other than that, we will be finishing with some exercises on the floor, so it might be worth having a mat to lie down on for comfort. Now, my challenge is to help you to feel better from completing these exercises in this video. So ask yourself, how do you feel right now, mentally, physically, and emotionally, on a scale of one to 10? One if you feel awful right now, and 10 if you're feeling great. Make a mental note of where you are now, because I'll ask you again at the end of the workout to see if you feel any better. It's important that you conduct this workout at a comfortable level and intensity that you can manage, so be conservative with your approach to it, and you can always slow it down a bit if you need to, and take a break or pause the video at any point. Before we start the workout, I just want to briefly explain the techniques for the alternative exercises if you don't have a therapy band. But if you've done this workout before, or you have a band for the exercises anyway, you can skip this part and go straight to the start of the routine to the time I've shown on screen now. Right, if you're still with me, there are four exercises in today's routine using the therapy band to work most of the major muscle groups in the body. So let's go through the options if you don't have one. The alternative to the chest press movement will be a push-up. This can be done against a wall, using the armrests on a chair or sofa, or if you're very strong, you can even do it on the floor. Whichever variation you choose, just make sure your elbows are always lower than your shoulders at about a 45 degree angle away from the body. In addition, keep your core muscles tight while performing this exercise, as they will also be activated during the movement. The second one is the squat with the band. So here you can do a sit to stand exercise with something behind you like a chair that your bottom can kiss on every repetition. Keep your feet a shoulder width wide and only bend the knees and drop the hips as low as you can without compromising your strength. Stick your bottom back on the way down and don't let your knees collapse inwards to avoid excessive pressure on your knee joints. The third one is the seated row with the band. Instead, you will need some weights to hold onto for this one which can be a pair of dumbbells if you have any, or use a couple of bottles of water as I'm showing here. This is the bent over row, and you'll need to ensure that your upper body remains still throughout the movement with a slight lean forward, bending from the hips so that your lower back stays neutral. To aid this, keep your knees slightly bent and stick your bottom up in the air behind you all the time while you squeeze your shoulder blades back and bring the hand weights to the side of your waist for each repetition. For the final exercise, the lying bridge, you can do exactly the same but without the band. This way, really focus on the movement by tilting the pelvis backwards, pressing the lower back into the floor before pushing the heels of the feet into the floor to raise the bottom up. This will target the glute muscles, which are particularly important for maintaining hip and lower back strength. So now you know the alternatives, I will put a small picture up on the screen for these during the main exercises in the workout to remind you, but get yourself ready and let's go. Right, let's start this workout then with a gentle warm up. We're gonna do some light cardio mobility exercises 
Make sure you've got a little bit of space around you and I want you to start with a walk on the spot. So we're going to use this warm up to gradually build your heart rate up slowly over the period of the next sort of four to five minutes or so. If you want to, you can change it from a walk into more of a march just to bring the knees up a bit higher and swing your arms a bit more. Or if you really want to go into it, you can go into a jog. That kind of depends on how you feel today as to what you feel you'd like to do. So I'll let you choose. Right then, while we keep the feet walking on the spot, I want you to get you to start moving the shoulders now. So we're gonna do some shoulder shrugs. So as you keep the feet moving, lift both shoulders up towards your ears, squeeze the shoulder blades back together, and then let the shoulders drop down. So we get nice big circles, both shoulders moving together. So we can start to activate those postural muscles in the top of the back and release some of the tension in the muscles in the neck. Good. Let's do one more of those. Okay, let's start to mobilize the shoulder joint itself. So I want you to lift the elbows up now, squeeze the elbows back and then drop them back down. So we're just generating a little bit more movement into the shoulders by lifting the elbows up that little bit higher. Good. Let's do one more. Brilliant, and then bring it just back into normal walk again. Okay, we're gonna go into moving from side to side next with a little bit of a heel flick. So from there, I want you to sidestep and then flick the heel up towards your bottom as you move from side to side. If you wanna get the arms moving a bit as well as you do it like this, then that's fine. It starts to feel a bit like an aerobics class. So just flick the heel up, bend the knee. We're getting a bit of a dynamic stretch for the muscles on the front of the thigh. Good. Last few. Brilliant. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is a knee raise. We're gonna bring the knee straight up to the front. As we do that, we're gonna twist the upper body so it ends up tapping the opposite hand. So we're gonna do right knee to left hand and then left knee to right hand. So your knees are coming straight up at the front. If you're bringing your left knee up, you're twisting your upper body to the left. So it ends up tapping the opposite hand. So we're getting some mobility in the spine and into the hips. Good, a few more of those. Okay, brilliant. Right, now we're gonna lift the knees out to the side. As we do that, if you just bring your fingertips by the back of your head, just behind your ears, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna lean to the side. So you're trying to get the elbow to come down to meet the knee as the knee comes up to the side. Don't worry if you can't actually get there, but just try and emulate the movement as you're bending the spine laterally. Good, should be feeling the heart rate is going up a bit, so you should be breathing a bit faster by now. Good, let's bring it back to normal walk again. Okay, we're gonna combine some footwork with the arms together. So the next one we're gonna do is gonna be a heel dig out to the front. So you alternate left and right, pulling the toes back towards you as you dig the heel to the front. At the same time, we're gonna do a bicep curl action with the arms. So keep the elbows tucked in, Bring the fists up to the shoulders at the same time as you do the heel dig. Good. A few more of those. Let's go on to the next one. The next one we're gonna do is a toe tap out to the side and then you bring it back to the middle. As we do the toe tap, we're gonna do a straight arm raise. So we can do the arms out to the side like this, or if you prefer, you can do it up to the front. Do it with the thumbs up, so give yourself a thumbs up. Give me one as we're doing the movement. So toe tap with a straight arm raise. Good, last few of those. And then we're gonna do toe tap to the back next. So toe taps to the back behind you, keeping most of the weight on the front foot. Lift your elbows up behind you and then keep the elbows there. You're gonna straighten the arms back as you do the toe tap to the back. So we're getting this arm extension at the same time as you do the toe tap behind you. So we're working into those muscles on the back of the arms. Good. Last few. Brilliant. Right, let's go back into a walk again. You should be feeling warmer by now. So let's gradually bring the feet down to a standstill. 
and then I want you to take your feet out a little bit wider. So from here we're going to do some side bends. So I want you to place the hands on the side of the legs and then from there just slide your hand down one leg as far as you comfortably can. Bring it back up to the middle and then do the same the other way. So in your own time, just lean in from left to right. Just go in as far as you feel comfortable. As we're doing this, you'll start to feel your heart rate recover a bit. Your breathing will start to come back to normal. Good, let's do one more. And then bring it back up to the middle. Brilliant. Now we're gonna bring the hands in front of the chest like this. And then this time we're gonna rotate the spine. So you're gonna turn your shoulders to face one way, come back through the center, and then turn to face the other way. So again, in your own time, just twist each way from left to right, going as far as you comfortably can. Good. One more. And then bring it back to the center, bring the feet back in. And the last one we're gonna do is if you have your hands just behind you again in the base of the skull here, we're gonna do what I call wing arms. So that's where you try and get the elbows to touch to your front and then you squeeze the elbows back as far as you can. So elbows touch if you can, squeeze the elbows back as far as you can. As you do that, I want you to do a heel raise. So from there, as you're taking your elbows back, I want you to cut, lift the heels up off the floor and then drop the heels back down as you bring your elbows back in. So we're working through mobility in the ankle at the same time as we're working through mobility in the shoulders. So heel lift, control back down. Quite good for balance as well, this one. If we're doing it slow and controlled, it's gonna help work on your balance. Good. Raise up as high as you can, squeeze the elbows back as far as you can. One more. Lift and squeeze back. Good, okay, and relax. Right then, that's the cardio mobility warm up done. We're gonna go into the main part now, so this is where you're gonna need your stretchy band. We're gonna start with the chest press. So you need the band to be pretty much in line with where your shoulder blades are on your back. And then with the two ends of the bands at the front, you're gonna have a V shape, make a V shape with your hand, and you're gonna bring it back and up underneath really close to the side of your chest on each side. So there should be a huge amount of tension now across the band, across the back. And I've already got tension in the band when it's here. Okay, so the alternative to this, if you don't have your band, is the press up, which I explained earlier in the video. So you're gonna be doing that one. But if you've got a band, what I want you to do is put one foot forwards, one foot back. Stand yourself up tall, pull your tummy in nice and tight. Elbows, we don't want our elbows out here nice and high. Just drop the elbows down a little bit. They don't have to be tucked right into your waist, but just keep them relaxed so they're always lower than your shoulders. And then you've already got tension in your band, so the movement is we're gonna try and stretch the band by pushing the fists forwards. See if you can get your arms to go straight, at which point you feel a lot of tension in the band there. And then control it back to where you started. So we're gonna do 10 reps of these. We've got all the strength exercises, we're gonna do 10 reps. So deep breath in and then breathe out as you push the fists away, stretch the band, breathe in as you come back. And again, so breathe out as you push, breathe in as you come back. So all the time as you're doing the movement, it should be slow and controlled. So this is working all the muscles across the chest, the shoulders, and into the triceps on the back of the arms. So that's where you'll start to feel some tension. But keep breathing with the movement. Good, that's five, we've got five more of these. Try and keep the upper body still. So this one's working into the core muscles a little bit as well. So we're trying to keep that tight as we do the movement. So we're not allowing the upper body to move. So use the core muscles, keep those activated to keep the body still. Let's do two more. Good, bring it back, last one. And bring it back. Excellent, okay. Right, the next exercise we're gonna do is the squat with the band. So this is where we want the band on the floor and you want your feet to stand on the band so that your feet are about a shoulder width wide. If I make sure I've got the ends about the same length, but I'm gonna to start to wind my hands around the band until my hands are about midway point between my ankles and my knees. So literally by the side of the shins and there should be some tension on the band. You're gonna squat your bottom down and then the movement from there then is keeping your arms straight, 
we're just gonna stand up, which is stretching the band. So as we stand up tall, hips go forwards, up nice and straight. And then as you go back down, stick in the bottom backwards as you lower back down into the squat. So the alternative to this is the sit to stand. So this is where you can use your chair. Again, we're gonna do 10 reps. So get yourself set up ready and off we go. So extend up nice and tall, keeping the arms straight and then control back down. So that's one. Breathe out as you come up and then breathe in as you lower, that's two. Good. So just make sure you're not trying to pull with your arms, just keep your arms straight because the aim is that the legs are doing the movement to stretch the band so you're not trying to pull on it with your arms. That's just there to aid the movement. So keep the arms straight and relaxed. That's four. Good. So nice, slow and steady. Again, we're doing 10 reps. We're halfway through. Six. And down. Seven. If you find this is easy, you can always wrap your hands up more around the band to create more tension in it. But hopefully it should feel about right. Good, two more. Slow and steady, feel those leg muscles starting to work now. You feel that in the top of the legs. You might feel it in the bottom of it as well. Last one. Up nice and tall, and then back down. Good, right then, release off the band. Okay, the third one we're gonna do is the seated row. So this is where we're gonna be sat down for this one. And I want the band in the same way that we did when we were standing for the squat. So the band's gonna be sort of midway between the heels of the feet and the balls of the feet. So it's along the bottom. If you're worried about the band actually flicking up and hitting you in the face, you can just point the toes forwards a little bit for this one if you prefer. So again, I've got the same length of band on each side from the foot. I'm gonna hold on to that, wrap my hands around the band again until I've got the hold of the band with some tension midway between the ankle and the knee. I'm then gonna sit myself up tall. So that's engaging the muscles across the lower part of the back. So hold that position still, and the movement then is you're gonna draw the shoulder blades back, bring the elbows back and the fists back, trying to get the fists to come to the side of the waist, and that's stretching the band, and then control it forwards until you return back to your start position. Again, we're keeping the upper body still, so there's no movement with the upper body, everything's in the arms and in the shoulders. So deep breath in, and then breathe out as you lift. Squeeze the shoulder blades back, elbows back, fists back to the waist, slowly as you go forwards. That's one. And again, squeeze it all back. Really focus on getting the squeeze between the shoulder blades when you've got your fist to the side of the waist. That's two. Breathing out. Breathing in. That's four. Obviously with the band, it should get harder and harder as you stretch it more. So I feel like the tension's increasing. When you get to here, that should be where it's hardest. And then it'll get easier when it's further forwards. So that's halfway through, let's do five more. Really get those elbows back and the shoulder blades pinch back together as much as you can. Squeeze. Good, well done. Keep that upper body still. You might feel some tension in the lower back. That's perfectly normal. As long as you're not stooped forwards. So keep yourself sat up tall. Squeeze it back. Good, let's do one more. Shoulders back, elbows back, fists back, squeeze. And return back to the start. Brilliant, okay. So there's the first three exercises. We're gonna repeat those three again. So we're gonna go back to the chest press. So I won't need to explain it quite so much this time. So get yourself set up so the band's across the top of the back. Remember to hold the bands as close as you can to the side of the chest so you've got tension on the band already. One foot forwards, one foot back. Deep breath in, and then breathe out as you push the band away. Get those arms as straight as you can, slowly as you come back. Breathe out as you push. Breathe in as you come back, that's two. Three. Remember not to lift the elbows up too high. Four. So keep those elbows lower than the shoulders at all times. Five. Keep that body dead still. Work into those core muscles. Six. And again, seven. 
By the way, I'm likely to lose count as I do these. That's quite normal. <laughs> Eight. So we could end up doing 15 of these. Nine. Good. One more of these. Push it out nice and straight. 10. And bring it back. Good. Right, let's go into the squat. So change it so the band's on the floor. Feet about shoulder width wide. So you're standing over the band. Wrap your hands around the band until you've got it just below the knees. Stick that bottom back and down so we're getting the knees and the hips to bend. So you're keeping that neutral spine in your back. Deep breath in and then breathe out as you stand up. Against that band, hips forwards up nice and tall. Breathe in as you lower. Two. Three. That's it, nice slow controlled movement. You can go as low as you can. Four, the lower you go, the more of the muscles you work around the bottom. Five. So really push against that band to stretch it. Six, you should be feeling that, especially in the front of the thighs and in the back of the thighs and in the bottom. Seven, three more. Eight, last two. Nine, one more. 10, good. Slowly release the band so it doesn't flick up and get you. Okay, back to your seated position then for the seated row. So again, make sure you've got your feet about shoulder width wide. Band should be between the heels and the balls of your feet. Point the toes forwards if you feel that you need to. Make sure you've got the band set up in the right place so you should feel tension on it. Sit yourself up tall. Another 10 reps with the row, ready? Off we go, so squeeze the shoulder blades back, elbows back, fists right back, slowly as you go forwards. That's one. Breathe out as you lift. Two, deep breath in. Three. It's a really good way to work into the postural muscles, this one. Four. Especially if you find yourself sat down a lot during the day, this is gonna help. Five. Good, six, and again, shoulder blades right back, seven. So as you're pinching the shoulder blades back, be careful your shoulders don't lift up. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears. Eight, last two. Focusing on pulling them back together. Nine, one more, and 10. Good, well done. Right, we finished those three exercises. The fourth one we're going to do is actually going down to the floor. So you might want to use your band for this one. We're going to do two sets of 10. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the first set is going to be without the band. And then I'll show you that with the second set, I'll show you how you can use it with the resistance band. So we're going to do a bridge, a line bridge. So you're going to be led down on your back. You want your feet about a shoulder width wide on the floor. And you need to kind of find a position that feels comfortable for your lower back. So there should be a little bit of a gap into the, uh, underneath the lumbar part of your spine against the floor. To do this line bridge exercise, the first part of the movement is to get a pelvic tilt. So that basically means from there is I'm gonna press my lower back down into the floor, which tilts the pelvis backwards like I'm trying to get the tailbone of my spine to come up. And then I'm pushing the heels into the floor to then lift the bottom up as high as you can. So you'll feel some tension here into your bottom and then lower back down back to where you started. Okay, so it's a pelvic tilt, and then we're gonna get that bridge where we're trying to lift up. So we're really working into your abdominals. We're also working into the glutes as well around the bottom. So hand position, you can just keep the hands to the side. Relax your head backwards on the floor. And if you need a cushion, put a cushion underneath it if you need it. So let's get ready. So we're gonna press the lower back down, lift the bottom up, push through the feet into the floor, lift the hips up as high as you can, and then lower. So that's one, let's go through that motion again. Press the lower back down first, lift the bottom, push up the hips high, slowly lower back down, back to start position, that's two. Breathe out as you go up, breathe in as you lower, that's three. Good, four. You'll feel some tension in the lower part of the abdomen, particularly when you do that pelvic tilt first, before you lift the hips up. So you should consistently feel some tension in the lower part of your abdomen as we're activating those core muscles. Good, I think that's five again, I'm lost, probably lost count. Let's 
Let's make that six. Lower. Okay, if you can get the hips to go up any higher, push the hips up higher. If you can, that will just activate the glutes that little bit more. Three more. Lower back down first. That's eight. Two more. So pelvic tilt. Then lift the hips up. Squeeze through those glutes. One more. Press and then lift. Good, and lower. Okay, brilliant. Have a little rest for a second. The second set I'm gonna show you now is actually using the resistance band. So if you want to do that, all you need to do is just rest the resistance band across your hips, okay? And then from there, you're gonna hold the really close to the where your hips are. You're gonna press the band down on the floor. So I'm basically using that my hands on the floor as an anchor point. So then as I then press up against the band, that's just adding a little bit more resistance to the movement. So force the hands down to the floor, just either side of your hips. So get yourself set if you want to do it with the band, or if you don't want to, you can just do it again like we did the first set. So we're going to do another set of 10. So get yourself ready and press the lower back down and then lift the hips up as high as you can. If you've got the band, keep the hands down on the floor and then lower back down. So that should add to the resistance to the movement as you're trying to stretch the band, as you're trying to lift the hips up high and then lower back down. That's two. Pelvic tilt, lift the hips push, three, breathe out as you go up, breathe in as you lower, it's four, good, that's five for halfway through, so I can feel a bit of a difference compared to the first set now, particularly in my glute muscles around the bottom, Let's do four more, lift the hips up as high as you can, Keep your anchor points down on the floor, so don't let your hands lift up away from the floor. Good. Let's do the last two. Press the lower back down, lift the hips up as high as you can, push against the band, and lower. One more if you can. Push. And lower. Good. Well done. Right then. That finishes the strength and conditioning components, so you won't need your band now. We're going to finish off with the cool down element, which is gonna be some nice gentle stretches and some relaxation exercises. So the first one we're gonna do while you're in this lying position is you're just gonna straighten your legs out so you can lie flat on the floor. And then from there, I want you to take your arms overhead and just try and what we're gonna try and do is basically elongate at the whole of the body. So imagine you're trying to point your toes forwards at the same time as I'm gonna try and take my hands up the opposite way. So I'm like stretching the whole of the front of the body out. So just try and relax your breathing while you hold that position. So I'm trying to reach the fingers up as high as I can above my head and I'm just trying to reach my toes away from the opposite way down towards the feet as far as I can. Good, okay, and then from there we're gonna switch. I want you to bring it into a curl up into a ball. So grab hold of your shins and then you're gonna pull the knees in towards your chest, which should lift the lower part of the back up off the floor, lift the shoulder blades up off the floor so you're trying to curl into a tight ball. Relax your breathing as you hold that for a few seconds. Good, and then release it back down. Let's do that two more times. So straighten the legs out first, point the toes forwards that way, and then reach the hands up, reach up as high as you can the opposite way. Then try and stretch out all the front of the body, holding it for a few seconds, but keep breathing with it. So relax your breathing. Good, and then let's go back into that tight ball again. So bringing the knees up towards the chest, grab hold of the shins. So now we're just stretching out all across the back. Good, one more time through. So straighten the legs out, point the toes forwards that way. Arms up above the head, reach up as high as you can above your head. My shoulder mobility is very, very poor, so I can't actually get my hands on the floor. So don't feel that's what you should be doing. Uh, if you can get your hands on the floor, your arms on the floor, that's perfectly normal. Good, and then last time back into the ball. So bring the knees up towards the chest, pull it in nice and tight. Might feel that's a bit more uncomfortable when you're breathing, possibly. 
So just try and relax your breathing still as you do that. Good, okay. Right, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna try and twist the spine. So I want you to have your feet together on the floor, keeping your feet close to your bottom. The hands you can just keep to the side of the body and we're gonna drop both knees over to one side. So the movement from there, then I'm gonna make sure that I keep both shoulders flat on the floor as I do this. And depending on your mobility of your spine will depend on how far you can go. So you may find you can get both knees to drop to the floor, but make sure the opposite shoulder doesn't lift. So I've dropped my knees down to the right, but I'm making sure that my left shoulder is still flat on the floor. Hold that for a few seconds. Good, and then bring it back up to the middle. We're gonna now switch to go the opposite way. So I'm dropping both knees over to the opposite side. And again, the opposite shoulder. So this time when my knees are on the left, I'm making sure that my right shoulder blades and my back of my right shoulder stays flat on the floor. Relax your breathing as you hold that position for a few seconds. Good, come back up to neutral. Let's do that again a couple more times. So switch over to the first side, drop the knees down, keep the shoulders flat on the floor. Listen to your breathing, so it should be slow and controlled. Bring it back up to the middle. Let's switch over to the other side. So again, just go as far as you comfortably can, keeping the shoulders flat on the floor. Good, bring it back up to the middle. We're just gonna do one more each side. So back to the first side again, just drop the knees down. back up to the middle and then the opposite side drop the knees down might feel some tension around the waist and the back on this one good and then bring it back up to the middle okay in your own time slowly sit yourself back up just so you can get into a seated position and if you want for this last one, we're just gonna do a couple of cycles of breathing, some slow breathing. So just find a position that you feel comfortable in, however you wanna do it, so where you're sat down. If you wanna sit into a chair, that's absolutely fine. But just find a comfortable position for you to be able to focus on your breathing. Now I've actually got the chair behind me to use as a back, back support, which is fine, but if you're comfortable just sat on the floor as well, that's okay. So find that comfortable position. We're gonna go through three breathing cycles, and with this, we're gonna breathe in for a count of three, but we're gonna breathe out for a count of six. So we're trying to expel as much air out of your lungs as possible. We're trying to deplete, get a lot rid of the carbon dioxide that's built up in the body from the exercise you've done today. And hopefully by the end of that, you should be feeling a bit better. So get into a comfortable position, and then let's take a deep breath in. So breathing in, two, three, and then breathing out for six. Three, four, five, six. Okay, deep breath in. Two, three, and then breathing out for six. Four, five, six. Good. One more time through. Deep breath in for three. Breathing out for six. Good. And sometimes using that type of uh, breathing actually helps with anxiety as well. So if you feel, ever feel a bit anxious, that's a good way to just try and do a couple of those breathing cycles. Breathe in for three, out for six, and it's just a nice way to help you relax. Good, right, you've completed your workout for today. Well done. Well done for completing this workout today. You've done amazingly well. And the test for me now is to see if you feel better. I asked you at the start how you felt on a scale of one to 10, and I'm asking you again, one if you feel awful, three to 10 if you're feeling great. I'm hoping that the number now is a bit higher than what it was at the start, so let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this workout today, then please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Also, please note that I have a playlist of other workout videos that might interest you if you want to add some variety to your weekly physical activity, and I'll leave a link in the description below for it. 
But thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.